from Studio B in the Communication Building at Olivet Nazarene University. It's Tonight at Olivet with Jack White. Tonight's guests include Chaplain Mark Holcomb and Danelli Rabinellas Hernandez. Here's your host, Jack White. Hey everybody, thank you so much for being here. Welcome to Tonight at Olivet. I'm your host, Jack White. A newspaper publisher in Oklahoma had a surprise while going to the bathroom Monday morning. When he walked in, there was an adult male bobcat inside. Although initially startled, the bobcat explained the situation. He simply wanted to apply to be the new cartoonist. We reached out to the paper, and they said they had narrowed their search for a cartoonist from the bobcat and two other applicants. <laughs> a 450-pound bearded seal laid down on an Alaskan airport's landing strip. We reached out to the SEAL to find out why he was at the airport in the first place, and he told us that he had missed a flight to Oklahoma to interview at a newspaper. <laughs> For those who aren't aware, Zomato is a restaurant recommendation app. You tell it what you like, allergies, things you don't like, that sort of thing. Well, when one Zomato user ordered a cake with unspecified text, the bakery put info from their profile onto the cake. <laughs> this is not the first time this bakery has had such a mess up. Last year, one user had his account linked to his Tinder, and the cake looked like this. <laughs> Ohio University has beaten the record for the most people dressed as penguins in one room, with 972 people in penguin suits. We interviewed one penguin who took, to, who took the opportunity to infiltrate the university to get a communication degree, hoping to be the new kid cuisine mascot. <laughs> Another penguin, not realizing that these were all people in costumes, angrily asserted that this was not the world record and that they had been in the presence of several hundred more penguins than were at the event. Towards the end of the day, Morgan Freeman, famed voice of March of the Penguins, showed up, ready to narrate the event. Mr. Freeman said, where penguins are, so am I. <laughs> we have a great show for you all tonight. Chaplain Mark Holcomb is in the house. And also, Shine FM's very own, Danelli Rabinellas. We'll be right back. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. Welcome back. We all know him as our ONU chaplain or the man with the red iPad. Let's bring him out. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Mark Holcomb. Hey. Hey. Good having you on the show. Thanks, Jack. Thanks chaplain for Holcomb. Me. Yeah, absolutely. We were excited you agreed to do this. Okay. Yeah, no, we're thrilled you're here. Me too. Chaplain Holcomb, something that uh, my boss, Aaron Crane, pointed out to me that once I saw, I was not able to. To ever not notice was your pinky. I believe it's your your left pinky. Oh, my pinky, the one yeah. that he mimics all the time. The one that he mimics Every time all the time. He sees me, he yeah. gives me the pinky salute. Yeah. Yeah. What what happened? What what's the story behind well, this? Well, uh... it's frozen like that. Okay. Uh, it it is my trophy from my last intramural basketball game played here at Olivet. <laughs> wow. Probably six or seven years ago, there was like, I'm not kidding. There was five seconds left in the game. We were winning by 20 points. Guy made a long court pass. I went up just to swat the ball away, and the guy on the other team got to the ball before me and completely dislocated the knuckle. I went and got it. I, I've been to a surgeon. This is how they set it. So, huh. I mean, I, it's not supposed to be that way, sure. but 
When I went back in after four weeks and told them that I couldn't bend it up, he said they'd have to re-break it. And I'd already working. done that once, yeah. so I think one break was enough. So I just, that's it. That's what you get. Wow. Glad you were that dedicated to intramurals. Well, that's, uh, that's why I said it was the last time <laughs> I played. Was that your final game well, because of the injury? See, it was right before Thanksgiving break. Okay, okay. so we're coming up and how the, long ago? Yeah, I know. So my, the last thing my wife told me when I left, left the, the house was, don't get hurt or I'm sending you home <laughs> to your mom. And then I came home with a finger that was completely dislocated. <laughs> It's really not that funny, but yeah, I guess it is kind no, of funny. No, no, not funny at all. No, not Don't at laugh all. at Holcomb's pinky. Yeah, go ahead. It's, you know, laugh at my laugh at my expense. It's okay. This chapel theme this semester, yes. Cultivate, yes. what is that all about? What's that mean? Well, there's a big picture and a, a little picture, I think, to what Cultivate means. Because I, I think basically um, I read a couple books, Garden City and Creating Culture this semester, or this summer, prepping for the semester. And I think... It, it has to do with the fact that we're all creating something. We're cultivating something. Uh, we cultivate families, uh, the, the type of families that we have, um, communities, churches, societies. And so just kind of the challenge uh, kind of laid out for us this semester to just try and figure out what, what role do we play in cultivating um, the lives that we live and the communities and societies that we're a part of. Wow, that's great. So this semester we've already had so many great speakers. Uh, who's been your favorite to get to hear from? Well, I, I think my favorite has been Tony Kriz. I, mm -hmm. I, don't, I think what students didn't realize about Tony being here was we didn't find out till a week before. Um, we had Daniel Strickland scheduled, uh, oh, okay. who is uh, Salvation Army. Um, and her son was in a car accident, so oh. I made a phone call to Tony a week out. And I think you uh, also the speaker, I, I love Tony a lot, but the second day, and again, it's something I don't think students realize, is that message was done just for us. So the videos oh, wow. that he did, he produced that just for our campus, wow. just to kind of help to come alongside the theme that we had with this semester so I appreciate what Tony did yeah. in, in speaking into our community. Absolutely. Very meaningful. Yeah. So we're a little more than halfway done. A What's lot more than halfway. Okay, okay. Yeah. What's to come for Chapel Hill this semester? Well, Wednesday you get to hear me. Great. So I'll be speaking Wednesday, Thursday. Jerry Molnar is here, and he comes for a community prayer breakfast. It's a partner that we have with an organization in the community. Okay. And then next week on Wednesday will be Nicole Bromley, and then our last panel discussion on trafficking. Wow. Nicole does a lot of work um, with helping women come out of sex trafficking, and so she'll be sharing some of her story on Wednesday, and then we'll have a panel discussion with those that are actually involved um, in trafficking with a couple of our faculty on Thursday. Sure. After so, that, it's just Advent. Okay. So we get back from Thanksgiving, every, it's, it's everything Christmas. Wow. That sounds kind like of crazy. Of yeah. All right. So next semester, next semester, we have a whole new slew of chapel speakers, a new theme. Yes. What, can we get a taste of that? Yeah. It's going to be, uh, the theme's going to be around um, cultural things that shape us and the way that we view things in culture. I don't really know how I'm going to brand it. I'm kind of revisiting some issues that we've talked about probably six years ago now. Okay. When the theme was a line in the sand. Might right. use the same theme again. Not really sure. Uh, the line in the sand meaning when, when if you've ever walked on a beach, mm -hmm. when the water comes up, your footprints disappear. And yeah. the lines, so the lines tend to be shifting. So how do we know what truth is in a culture where the lines are always moving? Wow. How do we know how to deal with the things that, that, that we all face yeah. um, in culture. So that's kind of the theme, the direction. I haven't spoken a lot this semester because of panels, but I'll make up for it next semester. Okay. Yeah. Are there any uh, high profile high speakers profile. coming in that you can reveal here yeah. on the show? Spoiler or? alert. I yeah. mean, I'm not a big secret reveal guy anyways. So Ephraim Smith coming, who's, um, he's an African American speaker who's written a lot of books on racial reconciliation in the church, which we talked a lot about in the spring. Yeah. We're not revisiting that, but um, based on the topics, that will be one of the, the topics that we talk about again in the spring. Um, I mean, Michael Jr., Christian comedian, oh, wow. will be here. Uh, some might like the fact that we're going to, John Foreman, 
the the lead singer for Switchfoot will Very be cool. in chapel right before spring break. Wow! So that's some of the people that will be here next semester. I'm pretty excited. I always say when I'm in one semester, I can't wait till next semester. Sure. But um, I, I, next semester is really, you know, Lamorris Crawford will be back, who's right. a favorite of all our students. Ben Zobrist's dad will be here. Okay. Uh, so it's just going to be a great semester. Sounds great. Yeah. More with Chaplain Holton when we come back. Got a quarter? Did you know parking over tall, dry grass can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. Todd's a great guy. I mean, look at him. What a sweetheart. Attaboy. Wait, Todd, what are you doing? How totally selfish and untod like of you. Come on, Todd. Come on, man. Welcome back to the show. Next, we're going to play a game I like to call Bible or Not. What's going to happen is we have several quotes on the bottoms of these cards, and the quote is either from the Bible or a Shakespeare play. So let's get started. Uh, I, for one, hope you are pretty well-versed in the Bible, given that... Well, I guess we're about we're ready to happen. find yeah, out, are we? Yeah, we are. Yeah. Uh, since you are our guest, we'll let you go first. All right, so I read it. Yeah. To you. Yeah. Put a knife to thy throat, if thou be a man given to appetite. That's Shakespeare. That has to be. <laughs> Bible. Where? Where is it? Proverbs. Oh, huh. Never all right. heard that one before in my life. Oh, huh, interesting. I would have said Shakespeare, too. Cool. So. All right. I, yeah. feel, I feel good. But I'm still ahead. Men of few words are the best men. Shakespeare. Yeah, you're right. I would have thought that's from Proverbs. I would have thought two. so, too. Oh, huh. interesting. Did Shakespeare write Proverbs? That's the Proverbs? second one I've heard. Know? Okay. Neither a borrower or a lender be. The Bible. Definitely the Bible. No. Definitely the Bible? Ye Hamlet. <laughs> <laughs> I love that huh. look on your face, by the way. Interesting. Yeah. I'd have lost money on that. <laughs> All right. You're not going to lose any money. You're about to lose a game, though. I, <laughs> oh, I am escaped with the skin of my teeth. I am escaped? I am escaped. Sounds Shakespeare. Job. Ah. <laughs> huh. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, game on, right? You're up. <laughs> All right. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. Shakespeare. <laughs> The Bible. No. Where? Where is that from? It says Isaiah. Huh. Are these real? I don't. I don't, know I don't buy this. Up. I haven't heard of any of these verses, so I'm just saying it's all. It's all guess. It is a wise father that knows his own children. Oh Lord. Was that your answer? Bible. Shakespeare. Oh, no. This is not good. I thought that was Proverbs too. No, not, uh, we was, like hanging out in Proverbs, though, don't was, uh, we? I mean, the Merchant Shakes of Venice. Shakespeare's getting a lot of credit for writing a proverb play. that he probably doesn't deserve. Condemn the fault and not the actor of it. 
That back. sounds like the Bible, but I've been so wrong so many times. I'm going to say Shakespeare. You're lucky you came. Shakespeare. Yes. You're right. Yes. I don't know what the score is. But I don't know either. We're both you doing really be, bad. I don't even have my undergrad yet. You should, be, you should be oh, miles ahead of me. Oh, wow. You played the... You played that card, didn't uh, you? Yeah. yeah. I'm about to play. I told you I don't know Shakespeare. You've had three classes with Shakespeare. Okay, though. but you have a theology degree <sighs> and are on staff. Proverbs and Job. Okay, this is our last right. one. Oh, wow. To thine own self be true. Shakespeare. Shakespeare. <laughs> he knows the Bible. Thank you so much for being here, Chaplain Holcomb. Thank you for saying I know the Bible. You, you do. You, you know enough. Oh, thank you. Uh, come out and see him do a little more uh, every Wednesday and Thursday for the rest of the semester. Thank you so much for being here Thanks, on the show Jeff. tonight. Yeah. We'll be right back uh, with Danelli from Shine.fm. You won't want to miss it. Every year, 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. 40%. That's almost half the food we produce. Food waste is a serious problem. It impacts all of us. And it's expensive. Your family is throwing $1,500 a year in the trash. We're working hard to put food waste on the chopping block. And you can do the same at home. Learn how to cook it, store it, and share it. Just don't waste it. Go to savethefood.com. Thinking about stealing someone else's work? Think twice. Plagiarism. It's not worth the risk. Anxious that it's spring and your fingers still bare? Do you spend most of your time watching couples propose to each other on campus? Have you been attending multiple nights of speed dating, only to find that after you've mingled, you're still single? Yes, okay? Worry no more. Did you know that according to Pew Research Social and Demographic Trends, the majority of young Americans today are not rushing to the altar. Wait, so it's okay for me not to be engaged? What's the rush? Don't make the ring a fling. Welcome back, everyone. You may know her as an Olivet student, but many know her as the radio personnel on Shine FM. Ladies and gentlemen, Danelli Rabinellas Hernandez. Hi, Danelli. Hi, how Thank are you? you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, Good. Thanks. Thanks for being on the show tonight. Oh, thank you for having me. Uh, you work at Shine? I do. Uh, and so before we get too much into talking about Shine FM, we want to show people what a normal day at Shine looks like. So let's take a look at the clip. The tour of the building will cover the back half. The idea to make more student-oriented half. We've got an isolation booth in here, which is really important because uh, when people, for example, want to do audiobooks, which is an option, um, they can go in here and it really is a lot better sound than anywhere else. Then, back here are our student labs. So, everybody that majors in multimedia studies has to take the basic radio course. Um, and as part of the basic radio course, you're immediately put on the radio on our spark signal. It's 89.7. HD3, which people can access if they have um, an HD radio in their car or at home, but it's also on our app and online, as well as our other streams. So Spark is kind of housed in here. If students want to go live, which they have to do as part of class, actually, this is where they have to do it, um, which is really neat because they're immediately practicing what they're learning about in class. Um, so all of them are on air at some point. Mm -hmm. Then we also have two other online streams, which is the Shine Worship, which is housed in here. So worship is exactly what it sounds like. It's all worship music all the time. So it's our lighter songs, if you will, um, that are on Shine, all in here. And Brian mentioned today that a lot of churches use this stream for their pre-service music as people are walking in. And then Bria is our third online stream. It's Spanish for Shine FM, so it works out really well. Um, that doesn't necessarily have like um, <coughs> excuse me, a, a lab that houses it. You can access it anywhere to track. 
in these labs and uh, but yeah, like worship and like spark you can access on the mobile app and as well on our website which is Shine.fm or in Bria's case it's Bria with them. And our newly remodeled studio which is really exciting that um, it's you know, done, we're able to get back in here. Um, we switched the layout, it used to be kind of um, in the corner so when you'd be tracking or recording you'd be looking out. Um, but now we wanted to do it this way so that there's a little bit more free space back there for artists. So we just had our first artist, technically our first artist visit um, yesterday, Sanctus Real was in here. Um, they did an interview and um, played some songs for us. So the, the layout is different, but the equipment itself is different. So we brought up the equipment that was in Indianapolis, which was newer equipment, because we're making the switch over from analog to digital. Um, so that was done in several phases. And so this was you know, our second phase, uh, which is to remodel the studio, update the equipment. And we're still figuring it out, honestly, because there is new equipment, it just does sound different. It functions a little bit differently, um, but ideally we'll get better sound, better quality, and more efficient work done with this equipment. We also have more mics now, which is fantastic. That means we can have more people in here at a time, more band members talking, um, and you know, at the same time, if we need a mic, like a guitar or something, we can we can do that. We don't have to worry about the sound being distorted. So now it looks like things get very busy over at Shine FM. They can be. <laughs> uh, so you've been working at Shine since your undergrad, right? Mm -hmm. And how did you end up getting like linked in with the radio world and specifically at Shine FM? I started my freshman year because of Prof um, Carl Fletcher. Sure. So I was in the intro to radio, you know, fundamentals of broadcasting class, and you know, he was coaching us there. And I think he just he saw some poten potential, which was really nice of him to give me the opportunity. Um, so he put me on overnight my freshman year. Okay. And then after that, we developed Bria.fm, which is Spanish for Shine.fm. Okay. Um, so I switched to doing my voice work on there um, as their music director and, and as um, uh, one of the on-air personalities there. And then once um, they needed someone for evenings, then I switched back to Shine.fm, okay. but still managing and being music director for Bria. And then from that, it evolved into this new role now on afternoons. Very but, cool. Yeah, it's just been great to be involved with them for several years now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have, for several years, so uh, you are still at Shine, mm -hmm. but uh, you graduated. Things are very different yes. other than Shine. Like, what's different now? <laughs> what's your life after all of that? Everything's like? different. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it's just different to not be, you know, on campus so much. Mm. Um, I mean, for the past couple of years, I've, I've been a commuter, so it was different already. Um, so I guess it kind of transitioned me into life post my Olivet undergrad. Um, but I do miss, you know, the Olivet community, which I still get to have at Shine, uh, which is wonderful, and I still get to, you know, occasionally eat lunch in Ludwig or yeah. visit an Orpheus rehearsal. Um, but it is different. I mean, most of my close friends have moved away. Um, I do have a couple in town, but even so, it, it's just hard to you know, see everybody when yeah. you're not on the same campus yep. and when everybody has a job and is transitioning into being a real adult in the real world. Um, but I like that I still get to work for this university yeah. and still have you know, aspects of that community, even if it's not quite the same as it used to be. Sure. Shine FM is coming up on its uh, 50th anniversary. Mm -hmm. um, what, what did you guys do? Like, what, what did the 50th anniversary look like yeah, for it, you guys? It's kind of been, you know, a year-long celebration because this is the 50th year. Um, so it's been, a, it's, a, it's been a pretty big milestone I mm -hmm. mean, to have this legacy of a ministry that's been around in so many different ways and in so many different places. Um, and to now, you know, to have, you know, the ability to look back and see where it used to be. You know, it started at 10 watts. And then yeah. now that we're in several cities and, you know, are impacting, you know, thousands and thousands of listeners and with all this music and everything from the studio remodeling that has been going on to just just being able to tell people, you know, this, this ministry has been around for 50 years and, you know, people um, are investing more in us and to see people's desire to have this ministry continue to grow. Um, it's pretty meaningful to hear from listeners and hear how they want to invest and how they want to partner with us in having the ministry expand even more so. So 
it's been wonderful to you know have the studio remodeled now with newer equipment and eventually the back labs too which is, is something that we want to do so that students can learn mm -hmm. um, on newer equipment and, and have access to newer technologies that really we need. So we're transitioning more into a digital phase as opposed to analog. Yeah. Um, but also having things like the 50th celebration concert, 50th anniversary celebration concert with Burkina Country. I mean, everything about this year has just been pretty special. Nice. Uh, you mentioned earlier that you were switched to afternoons. Are yes. you doing a show in the afternoon then? Uh-huh. Cool. Yeah. I'm one of the co-hosts. Um, okay, tell us about your co-host. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's so great to have. I always wanted to do a partner show uh, because it just it, it's more interactive with each other. You're not laughing awkwardly at your own yeah. jokes. Um, I don't make the best jokes, so it's nice to have someone who is really fun and to be able to laugh at, at the stuff that he comes up with. And to have a co-host who has like three decades of radio experience. Sure. Um, he's our program director. Um, and he's my co-host. So what's wonderful there is even if I was by myself, he's the one I would go to for feedback and for okay. air checks. Uh, but because I'm working with him day after day, like I'm getting daily feedback and instant um, feedback on you know things I could be doing better or reassurance that I'm doing a good job on something. Yeah. Um, so it's wonderful in so many different ways. But overall, I mean, he's just a great human being and he's, he's like my radio dad. <laughs> he's like the age of my dad too and I'm like the age of his daughter. So we've got this interesting, quirky relationship. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun, and I mean, he spends half the time making fun of how I'm single and how he's going to find me my <laughs> husband, <laughs> and, uh, but at the same time, learning so much about sure. the radio world and, and how I can be a better broadcaster and storyteller, which awesome. is essentially what we are. Yeah. Well, Danelli, thank you so much for coming and talking to us about Shine FM. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. That's all we have for tonight. Good night from all of that.